Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and this is the 12th video uh, in the series of videos on immunology. In my previous video I've told you that uh, how the immune system that recognizes the foreign particles or the uh, pathogens for example and uh, in explaining this particular concept of the recognition of the pathogens or antigens uh, or the foreign material by the uh, immune system uh, two theories were there. One was known as the selective theory and the other one was known as the instructional theory. So in this particular video I am going to focus on the first theory that was suggested uh, back in the uh, 1900s and that theory is known as the selective theory and then I will be going to focus on the uh, I would say the modified version of the selective theory uh, which is known as the clonal selection theory. So this uh, selective theory, uh, uh, it was put forward by the Paul Ehlerich uh, in 1900, a uh, great immunologist. And uh, what he proposed was that the cells in the blood, they are going to express a variety of receptors on its surface. Uh, he called these receptors as the side chain receptors. And he was of the uh, opinion that these side chain receptors, they could bind to the infectious agents and inactivate them. Now, Paul Ildrich, he was of the opinion that these uh, blood cells, uh, they are pluripotent in nature. He said that these cells, they are pluripotent. Uh, by this he meant that uh, a single type of the cell is going to express a number of different receptors or side chain on its surface. And all of these side chains or receptors, they are going to have different specificities. So say for example, if this is a B cell, uh, it is expressing like this is one type of the uh, side chain receptor, this is another one, this is another one, and this is another one. So he proposed that the cells, they are pluripotent, that means they expressed different type of receptors on its surface. And another important thing was that each of these receptors, they have got a uh, different specificity. So this one would be for a different uh, antigen. This receptor would be for a different antigen and this one would be for a different antigen and so on. Now, uh, this concept of the uh, interaction between the side chain uh, receptors and the infectious agent, he was actually, uh, I would say, impressed by the uh, uh, ML Fisher theory uh, when he was explaining the interaction between an enzyme and a substrate and he was calling that like fit between uh, unlock and the key model. So Paul Illich was the opinion that as the uh, enzyme and substrate that fit each other like a lock and key, the same is the case with the uh, these chain receptors, with the side chain receptors and the interaction of the uh, infectious agents. Now Paul Illich he suggested that the interaction between an infectious agent and a cell bound receptor that is going to induce the cell to produce and release more receptor with the same specificity. So what he meant was that the first important thing is that the binding of the uh, antigen with the side chain receptor is specific and after the antigen has interacted that would cause the cell to produce and release more of these receptors uh, with, the end, with the side chain receptor that the antigen has interacted to. Say for example in this particular image if you can see if this is an antigen it goes and it binds with this particular type of the receptor that is present on the uh, immune cell. So what the cell will do is that after the binding of this antigen to this particular receptor the cell is going to produce a lot of them on its surface of this specific antigen not on this specific receptor not all of the receptors. So uh, when this uh, antigen interacts with this particular receptor the cell is going to produce a lot of these uh, receptors on its surface and they are going to release these receptors with the same specificity. Now the specificity of this receptor uh, that was determined in the host before its exposure to the foreign antigen. So what this means is that the antigen is going to select the appropriate receptor. So it is not the receptor that is selecting the antigen. This is actually the antigen which is selecting these uh, uh, receptor. And once the antigen has selected the receptor, the cell is going to produce a lot of these uh, specific receptors on its surface to neutralize this particular antigen. So ultimately, if you look at this uh, explanation of the Paul Eldritch, so ultimately, now our understanding believe that most aspects of the Eldritch theory, they were proven correct, 
with minor refinement uh, with minor uh, refinement and if you look at these uh, refinement uh, so he was of the opinion that one cell is going to produce different kind of the receptors now we believe that instead of one cell making many receptors each cell make many copies of just one membrane bound receptor that means that a single kind of the cell is going to produce a single type of the receptors that is going to have a single specificity so this is you can say a bit uh, we can say refinement in the theory of the polyligid still we are going to have a lot of different receptors but one cell is going to produce only one uh, receptor and that particular receptor is going to have monospecificity or one specificity so an army of the cell each with a different antigen specificity is therefore required and if you look at this one now the selected b cells they can be triggered to proliferate and to secrete many copies of these receptor in a soluble form uh, which we now call as the antibodies once it has been selected by the antigen binding so we had actually uh, you can say refine the theory of the polyridge he was of the opinion that a lot of receptors are produced by a single b cells now our understanding is that still different type of the receptors are produced by the immune cells but a single uh, immune cell is only going to produce a single kind of the receptor that means you are going to produce different immune cells with different uh, monospecific receptors on their surface and once the antigen have uh, selected the antigen that particular b cell is going to proliferate only that particular receptor which is required for the neutralization of the specific antigen now the theory of the uh, uh, the selective theory uh, that was you can say modified in the form of the clonal selection theory so this would be the modified form of the selective theory now this clonal selection theory uh, which was proposed by the uh, frank burnett in 1957 uh, that is a fundamental concept in immunology and this particular clonal selection theory explains how the immune system recognizes the first important thing and the second thing is that after the recognition how the immune system respond to these foreign substances like the pathogens or the antigens now according to this clonal selection theory what happens is that the immune system that consists of a diverse population of lymphocytes particularly the b cells and the t cells and each of these b cells or the t cells they've got a unique receptors on its surface capable of binding to a specific antigen so we are still talking about the paul ildrich theory that receptors they are produced on the surface and these receptors are capable of binding to specific antigen but the theory is a little bit modified now how these different type of receptors they are produced on the surface of these immune cells so these different kind of the receptors they are produced by a mechanism which is known as the genetic recombination uh, this is not the scope of this particular video i will have a detailed discussion on the genetic recombination that how the different type of the receptors they are produced on the surface of different immune cells but for this particular time just keep in mind that these different kind of the receptors they are produced through genetic recombination and this genetic recombination is resulting in an enormous inventory of different receptor specificities now this is just an explanation of the uh, clonal theory if you look at this one say for example we have got this antigen we have got say for example five six type of the cells like e b c d e and f and a single type of the antigen so this antigen that is going to bind to a specific kind of the b cells uh, in this particular case it is going to bind to the b cells uh, designated as c so when the antigen that uh, recognize and that bind to the uh, receptors present on the surface of the c uh, this particular b cell is going to you can say a uh, differentiate or it is going to proliferate into two types of the cells one they are known as the memory cells the other one they are known as the plasma cells and if you can see over here a lot of plasma cells that are there and they are produced by the uh, clonal selection by clonal i mean that all of these cells they are produced from this particular cell so all of these these are the clone of this particular b cells so these um, now what these memory cells do it, it is going to uh, give the immune system a prolonged memory or a long-lived memory about this particular antigen and these plasma cells they are going to produce a lot of antibodies uh, you can see 
you can see over here these plasma cells they are going to produce a lot of antibodies they are going to get into the uh, circulatory system uh, and they will be uh, reaching towards the uh, particular antigens that have entered into the body for neutralization of that particular antigen so two kind of things they are going on the memory cells that is going to keep the memory about this particular antigen and the plasma cell they are going to produce the uh, antibodies to neutralize the particular antigen now one of the problem is that uh, if we talk about this clonal selection theory uh, uh, what would be the concept of the self tolerance so the clonal selection theory that also include the concept of the self tolerance now what is this self tolerance now during the lymphocyte development whether they are the b cells or they are the t cells now so any cells that recognizes the body's own antigens of course there are receptors on our own cells so during the lymphocyte development any of these uh, immune cells that recognizes the body's antigen which we call is the self antigen so they are going to get eliminated through a process which is known as the clonal deletion so this would be again you can say uh, in contrast to the clonal development against the antigen we are going to make clones of the selected b cells we are going to produce a lot of them if they are going to interact with the self antigen we are going to eliminate them through a process which is known as the clonal deletion that means all of those clones of a particular cells which interact with the uh, self antigen they are going to get destroyed by this phenomena of the clonal deletion now this clonal deletion ensures the, the immune system primarily target the foreign substances while avoiding the attack on the healthy cells and tissues of the human body for example now this clonal selection theory has greatly influenced our understanding of immunology especially in the field of the uh, development of vaccines and the design of therapies for immune related disorders so if you like the video please subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell share it with your friends and i'll talk about the uh, instructional theory in my next video